April 2nd. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for, for a moment of silent prayer. Mr. LaFontaine, would you lead us in the pledge? Yes, sir. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. <laughs> Item three on the agenda, roll call. Ward 1, Alderman Miss Gamble is here. Ward 2, Alderman Mr. Richardson's here. Ward 3, Alderman Mr. LaFontaine's here. Ward 4, Alderman Mr. Clark is here. City Clerk, Secretary Lisa Planchard, uh, the Mayor, and City Attorney Ronnie Ortiz. Item 4A, motion to amend and finalize the agenda with the addition of items 4B on the Mayor's comments and item 8E7 and 8 Aye, on the consent agenda. I'll move. I'll second. Who moved? Three? Four. 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 Okay. Four. All right, let's go ahead and vote. Ward one? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Motion carries. Um, we're going to skip over item B right now and go to Alderman's comments, number five. Miss Gamble. Um, I have just a few things today. Um, the first thing that I wanted to say is um, for everybody at home especially, and if you're here and you haven't done that this yet, um, hurricane season's rapidly approaching, and we use code red as our emergency alert system. So if you haven't registered for that, you need to go to the Hancock County Emergency Management website and register for code red or you can go to my website at ragamble.com and register. Um, that will give you information, you know, if there's a, a, you lose water pressure in your neighborhood or there's all kinds of things that you can, alerts that you can get through that system. So it's important for you to sign up for it. Um, and then, Mayor, the, a while back, a few weeks ago, um, Alderman LaFontaine asked about MDOT um, and doing, taking care of some of the, the shrubbery that's in the rights of way that kind of obstructing people's mm. view coming out of different streets. Have we been able to get in touch with them? Well, you know? we, we, we're doing it ourselves. So, we're, okay. yeah, we're just, the big question was the palms in front of Circle K mm -hmm. at Washington, at Waveland mm -hmm. Avenue. And uh, actually, a private citizen went out there and trimmed them because they wanted the palms for Palm Sunday. So, <laughs> well, that but, um, we, um, any, And if you see any other locations that there's a problem, yeah, just let us know. That shopping center that's right at the Bay St. Louis Waveland line, mm -hmm. where lunch boxes on one right. side, and that, that is terrible. Okay. That's really bad. I'll look at it tomorrow. Um, I got a phone call this afternoon that the lights at the volleyball court are out, that they weren't coming on. I don't know what, if there's an issue with that or, or what. I just wanted to mention that to you. Um, and I was asking Bobby this a, a, a while ago. The lights on Coleman, there are a lot of the arms that are missing for the flags, and I know we've got um, it, it won't be too long before they'll be putting the, the military flags back up. Do we take care of those attachments that go on those lights, or is that Mississippi Power? It's not Mississippi Power. It could be uh, American Legion. I'll have to check and see who actually originally put them up. Okay. Uh, it's probably part of that program that was created for the veterans' flags. So okay. I'll check with the American League. Okay. Um, do we have an update on the Waveland Avenue apartments? Um, I spoke to a gentleman last Friday, and they're still in negotiations. So um, that's all I can tell you right now. Okay. It's a group out of New Orleans that 
goes around by and distressed properties and fixes them. Is it the same one they were in negotiation? No, with? this is a different group. This is a different group. The last group, they had a uh, an investor that pulled out, and so they pulled back their offer. So this is the second group. Um, Ronnie and I have met with them. So uh, they're a legit group. They're just trying to make it work. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> one last thing that I want to mention is that um, I think it's time, probably past time, for us to take a good hard look at the business center and how much that's costing the taxpayer mm -hmm. every year. I think we need to um, evaluate how much we're losing every year on that property. Okay. That's it for me. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Mr. Richardson. I don't have anything tonight. I got everything taken care of prior to the meeting. All right. Thank you. Ms. Levante. The only thing I have, Mayor, is uh, on B. Can we hold that until we can have a discussion about the capital projects? Okay. Uh, kind of all at once. Okay. Which which one? The on uh, under the mayor's comments for B. for B. Oh yeah, yeah. That way we can kind of look at okay. um, some numbers and see where we're gonna which one we're gonna go with on that. Okay. All right. And that'll be that'll be in I guess coordination with looking at the revenues and expense reports and stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clark. <coughs> Nothing tonight, Mayor. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, public comments. Item A, Ms. Bernie Cullen to update wa uh, the board on the Wave and Ground Zero Museum plans for fundraising and other issues. Excuse me, Bernie, can you try to move that mic? Down, I know. Down. That's good. Yeah, Thank you. Good. Yeah. Plus, that's how I go for all. It's on. Oh, it's not on. It's not. Is it green? No, it's red. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just proceed. I'll, I'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> tonight and um, just giving a brief overview of basically the study that we've done. Um, I'll talk a little bit more in depth um, just because presentations is most of my forte. Um, so it is, a, a, it is a lengthy document so um, I just want to highlight specifics um, that we overviewed. So we basically <laughs> did a full scale research dive into museum research in general. And most of what we have found is that most museums throughout the country have been seeing lower numbers due to the pandemic. Um, that's across any type of economic status, any type of level of development in the area. They've just been seeing a, a reduced amount of attendance. Um, and later we'll see in the visitor totals, the Waveland Museum has actually been rebounding after COVID 
much faster than most museums. Most of the statistics that we have found point to, um, as it shows there's 71% reduction in attendance as compared to pre-pandemic levels versus they've, they've been outshining their pre-pandemic attendance um, numbers. So it's very impressive that they've been able to keep very strong. They had a dip in 2020, um, but have come back strong. Um, I also wanted to highlight a lot of the things that um, have occurred on Coleman Avenue. Um, thank you. Um, especially the amount of businesses that there was pre-Katrina. Um, I especially remember Coleman Avenue a little bit before Katrina because my grandmother lived there and my, my great-grandmother lived right there on Waveland Avenue. Um, so I'm going to skip over the basic demographic information. I'm sure y'all can easily assess this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the <Lord laughs> target industry is going to skip more towards what the museum has to offer. Um, I will highlight general funding through museums are mostly due to the charitable giving, givings by um, anybody who attends the museum. That's their main um, in-stream um, influx of income is coming from um, anybody who's visiting and giving a donation. Um, a high percentage of their income is coming from government support as well, whether that be grants or any um, local level authority who is funding them. Um, in terms of um, grants, they have received a, um, a wide variety of grants for the museum and they have really fine grant writers who have been able to, it, to obtain any grant they have. Um, most of the grants that they have applied for, over $50,000 um, between 2019 and 2020. So it's been really great to, um, that's a really great opportunity to get their name out of there. And a statistic that we found is for every dollar, let's see, it's in, it's in our museum research section, but for every dollar in grants received, um, let's see if I can get to it. For every um, dollar in revenue that they receive, um, it returns more than five dollars in tax revenue. So they're really contributing to the local economy here. Um, next, we have the visitor total. So it's just highlighting. Um, if you'll turn to page twelve, you can really see how pre-pandemic levels have really just escalated since the pandemic, um, which is also shocking due to the digital nature that museums are really suffering from. Everything is digitizing. So it's, it's really confident to see them making such high numbers. Um, we compared visitor and donor donations just to see how many people are attending the museum and giving a donation, whether that be to purchase merchandise from them or just out of the kindness of being there. Um, local visitors, we found very interestingly, most of them do not come from Waveland or even from the South. Most of their visitors are from outside of the um, US South. So that's very interesting when you think of those people are probably um, coming to the area for that. And they have a very strong <coughs> visitor um, demographic. They're getting people from South America, Europe, and Canada, so they're, they're bringing so many people into this area that otherwise would not have touched the South. They would have just either gone to New Orleans or just gone somewhere completely else like Florida. So it's very um, interesting to see the amount of people that they are bringing from all over the world, not just around Waveland or the coast in general. Um, in terms of the specific impact that we have found with Waveland, um, it's not as much a direct impact on the economy. It is a direct on the, um, the sweet shop, the bakery that is hosted within the building. Um, they are kind of bringing in some um, business to them as well, but they're also greatly, um, most of their impact is in impact <laughs> because of all of those foreign visitors. Those are people that are wanting to spend significant amounts of cash on a, a vacation across the seas in, in Waveland. So providing a, a basis for them is, to spend all that money and gain that tax revenue is very important. Um, and so that leads into what we've mostly been seeing is um, our, a big 
section, which is tourism impacts on page 17. That's going to be the bulk of what mostly y'all are going to want to be concerned with. Um, the impacts on tourism that the museum hosts is, is very significant um, compared to the amount of lodging, the amount of restaurants that are located within Waveland. Um, and so that's kind of been the biggest um, impact on the study itself. So we have done an economic impact study, but it's formed mostly a social impact study just because of the lack of development along the area around the museum. If there was more areas of lodging, areas of leisure, there would be a lot greater of an impact on it. Um, but due to most of the areas of lodging being located along the highway, most people are getting sucked into the bay or Gulfport or any of those kind of areas to seek a higher quality of lodging. Um, and Bernie has shared that y'all are getting a Marriott, so that will help um, dramatically with that to provide them a place to stay and spend more of that revenue within Waveland. Um, and then we did compare, we did attempt to compare different museums, such as in Gulfport, Biloxi. Um, there's one specifically, the Alice Mosley Folk Art Museum in the Bay. Um, the only deterrent for comparing those is because they have such a developed area around them where their visitors can just walk easily and go to a restaurant. Plus it's, plus it's located within a historic building itself, like the train depot. That automatically gains them a lot of um, tourism. And they're located with other museums in mind, like the Mardi Gras Museum is located within that building as well. Um, so in terms of comparing, we weren't able to compare as much as we would have liked. But yeah, in, in conclusion with that, um, we have been seeing a really strong impact from the museum. I mean, they are what is drawing most of the people into this area. And especially, I mean, it's very significant the amount of foreign visitors. I mean, you see those numbers in like New Orleans that are getting just people from all over the place. So it, it's very, it shines very brightly on Waveland that they are able to draw in amount of people that are there to see natural disasters, but then they stay for the local culture. So I think it's a really great opportunity to highlight and draw them into the city. All right, so the impact numbers that you have are just for the this area, mm -hmm. which, or is it from for museums nationwide? Um, so in the general... Where, it's, where it says on the average the multi-day benefits of an art museum experience were equivalent to $905 per person per visit. Oh. Which page is that? 17. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, oh, I see, I see. So that's museums in general? In general, um, okay. Yeah, that was from one of the resources that we found that talks about specific tourism um, with museums and how much they're drawing. <coughs> So it is more of a big here. All right. Anybody have any questions? I don't know. We'll probably have questions after we have time to read through all this, yeah. Well, and I think, I think you know, we all know the issue, too, is like, you know, as Labrin continues to grow, which mm -hmm. y'all are doing very well, I mean, we've got three businesses, right? We mm -hmm. have new ones coming up. You know, at least we're an anchor at this point so mm -hmm. that they come and see. Um, it, it's really been amazing, you know, um, maybe we four people from Germany. But I, I don't think, I guess since the pandemic's over, more people are, are getting out and, and traveling. Mm -hmm. and because we do, and Robbie said it, you know, we have so many people who come from the Midwest and anywhere but the South. The South knows what's going on, okay? But all of them, are, they come and they just want to know, you know, how did Wayland recover? Because they've had floods, they've had fires, they've had mudslides.
studio Wayburn, who's only open a certain amount of time. You know, um, Buccaneer is in a different um, venue. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, I think that, and, and people look at TripAdvisor. You know, when we ask them, what's the number, why did, how did you find us? Um, and we have all that down there. Internet and TripAdvisor, you know. Um, Y'all look to the back of the, the booklet. Um, we did a, an information graphic mm -hmm. just to give you all the highlight information. They are the ranked number one thing to do in Waveland, and they're one of the top things to do on the coast. Yeah. So they are ranking very highly on the coast in general, um, which is pretty significant if you can think of all the amount of things that there are to do in Biloxi and Gulfport. I mean, they can't really beat out the aquarium, but, <laughs> but they are significant competition and they are on par with them um, according to those sites. Um, and just to draw with those foreign visitors again, they spend a lot more on average than a local visitor. A local visitor doesn't need something to bring home real quick. They can just drop by and just go back home. But a foreign visitor has to spend for lodging, all the meals, all that kind of stuff. So they are a significant value add when you think of the amount of visitors they could be getting it'd be a lot less if they were just getting everybody from Waveland attending. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. time to digest this whole, whole plan and the comprehensive business plan. It's, uh, it's got a lot of appendixes and, 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 uh, yep. and so um, I, I won't go into too much, but I would ask you to turn to page 22, which is the future plan. Um, the, uh, the two gentlemen that just talked about um, the, their economic assessment um, you know, mentioned um, potential for bringing money into, uh, into Waveland. Um, the board has looked at uh, our future plan with the intent of what, what can we do to bring money not just in the way but down to Coleman Avenue. And, uh, and so um, on page 22 are uh, just a, a group of our future plans, what we're looking at trying to do to bring money down this way. Uh, they've talked about the impact study uh, and uh, the nice thing about that impact study is it's broader than the museum. It's about the city of Waveland and, and the economics. And they're looking at data and data tables that, uh, that the same the business community is looking at when they're deciding to come into Waveland. So, um, it, there's a, you know, it's a broader study. You may want to look at that in, 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 a, in a slightly different context than, than you would just stri strictly into um, the, uh, the, the lens of a museum. Although there's a lot of great stuff about the museum and we're pretty proud uh, to be comparable to uh, many small museums in the country. Um, some of the initiatives that we've talked about and that we, we hope to do in the, in the next 12 to 18 months uh, include um, a gift shop. We, we already provide um, for donations, um, a, a variety of different um, books and, uh, and mugs and things like that. But we really want to consolidate that into a formal gift shop. Uh, this is an attempt to, to, to uh, become a revenue stream. It's not really a revenue stream right now. It's a hit and miss, mostly from uh, bus tours that come. But uh, you know, there, there's, it's, a, it's a small amount, uh, but we, we want to increase that. We want to focus. We think that there is a market out there for, uh, for people that will come to the museum if we uh, can give them the kinds of things that they're interested in, like the small books at a small cost and, 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 uh, and souvenirs and, and the take homes that, uh, that you would see in almost any other museum. So we want to we uh, take one of our rooms and dedicate that to a gift shop. Right now we don't have that. We have <coughs> kind of a display cabinet that has a few things in there. But we are going to take a more uh, uh, business approach to, 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 to building a bigger revenue stream from, uh, from souvenirs in that one room. But we also want to do more in that room. We, we would like to turn that room, in, uh, half of that room, into a welcome center. Waveland doesn't have a welcome center. We'd like to be able to have our staff offer information not just about the museum and, and souvenirs, but also be able to provide information about the businesses, shops, restaurants, and stuff that are in Waveland. And so we propose to take some of that space, probably about more than half of that space, and, and convert that room into, uh, it, it, it'll be a historic representation. It'll have the same uh, merchant counters and, and old school desks and things like that, that that you would expect to see in an old historic building. But uh, but it, it will be a place for people to also pick up information about the 
what you can do, you know, from, uh, from Buccaneer to, uh, to, to, to Walmart. I mean, whatever the merchants want to put in there and talk about and wave on whatever, you know, the city wants to put in there, we would like to, to, to open a welcome center uh, in, in, in that space as well and just designate it as a welcome center in partnership with the city because it takes the signage and some other things uh, to do. It, it'll have to be a partnership uh, uh, to do that. But I think both the city, um, Coleman Avenue, and the museum all benefit if we have a formal welcome center. If you look at Bay St. Louis and Gulf Point, they all have welcome centers. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, uh, and we'd like to put one you know, in the museum, not just because it draws traffic into the museum, because it will, um, uh, and build a visibility for, for that, but it benefits everybody. So we'd like to, uh, to be able to do that, and we're looking towards what it would take to, to do that, how much we need to, to budget for the furniture, and how much we would need to do to, uh, um, to, to renovate the room and move people around, and storage. There's a lot that goes into building up a gift shop and a welcome center. So there's one other thing I wanted to say about the welcome center. Um, please come please. up to the podium. I know, but everybody at home needs to hear you. The one thing I, I'm excited about if we do a, a welcome center is that when we looked at small museums in different places, all they had to do was put like a couch or two, two chairs, but they had charging stations right by the, where, where the visitors would sit. And I think that would be a big draw. You know, I mean, people now are electronic and everybody needs to charge their phones, charge their iPads, things like that. So, you know, that would be a really small expense to be able to offer, I think, a really huge benefit to visitors who would be coming into that building so that we, and so that we could have that there for them as well. That was an interesting piece. Uh, the, the, uh, the greatest amount of discussion that we had as a board was about um, developing a, a much larger revenue stream. And, uh, and we heard you loud and clear. Uh, you know, the, the museum needs to, um, uh, to, to move into the, next, um, in, 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 into the next phase of this museum, which is uh, uh, revenue generating so that it can pay its way uh, in partnership with, with donors and, uh, and sponsors but basically pay much more uh, in its way of, uh, uh, in, in its share. So uh, we've looked at ways to do that. Um, we've, we've created um, a, uh, a sponsorship brochure, which I think you all have a copy of mm -hmm. in there, um, that outlines a lot of uh, that, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it talks about sponsorships in terms of areas in, in the building, um, uh, rooms uh, and events, uh, those kinds of things that can be sponsored by, uh, by area businesses and um, and then one-time donations, um, but also naming opportunities for rooms and halls and things like that. And, and those are four-year naming opportunities that will bring revenue into the museum on a regular basis. Um, so um, those details are outlined um, in the, uh, uh, there's an appendix uh, that details that as well, uh, but the, the, the handout goes into some detail about what's available and what we hope to make available for, for local businesses and sponsors. Um, we also plan to hold um, appreciation events. We already hold um, uh, our host uh, hurricane um, awareness uh, uh, month uh, events. And uh, so, um, you know, we have that and we have the dignitaries come in, the mayor talks, and you know, we, uh, you know, we, we have a, it's a great uh, vehicle to, to, uh, dis to disseminate information about hurricanes and preparedness. Um, and we plan to do that. But in addition to that, we plan to have, like most museums, an appreciation day not necessarily a gala event, but appreciation for our donors, and appreciation for the supporters in the museum. That will come up, and then that becomes a regular and annual thing. And, and as any event, that we hope that that's a, uh, a spark for donations. It's a chance to get um, uh, people who care uh, enough um, to support the museum, to see what the museum's about, talk to the donors, talk, talk to uh, the volunteers, look around the hall. So it's a familiarization a gala kind of event for, for that, and we hope to do that on a regular basis, but we have to have the first one, and that's what we're planning and talking about to do right now. Um, another uh, initiative that we're talking about is an endowment, and um, and there's more information in the, in the things, things, something, E or whatever in there, but uh, it's, uh, the, 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 it's in its research phase right now, but the, the plan um, for the endowment is a, is a real estate-based endowment, a donation of real estate, much like MPB has a donation for cars, vehicles, and boats. This is a, 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 a vehicle for taking on, um, we're looking at uh, taking on real estate, converting that into uh, sales, and then uh, any profit that goes from that uh, goes into an endowment fund, and eventually an endowment fund gets big enough to pay for staff, or gets to pay for repairs, or improvements, or whatever. So, and, and if, you know, with the way the land values are right now on, along the coast, 
it doesn't take much to get you know to, to get a really sizable endowment if we can you know if we can build that. So we're looking into what that would be. There's, it's something that's done uh, in partnership usually with a finance company like uh, like a Ren and James or or Merrill Lynch or somebody. But um, and they have done that, and I've talked to Merrill Lynch about what's involved, and we're still working on getting the details. So I don't have really not prepared to talk too much in detail right now about that, but we hope you'll hear more about that later. Um, so, um, and then, um, of course, it's all about, for us, it's about programming. Once the, the, the museum has, um, has begun to hit its stride with a visitor center, we get uh, more visitorship, we get the welcome center, uh, foot traffic, then it's about programming and, um, and lectures and events. And so we've got a group that's, uh, that's looking um, at, at where we're going to go down the line for that, including new exhibits that will come in, hopefully bring in foot traffic down Coleman Avenue, but also um, temporary exhibits and, and maybe added uh, inventory uh, to our collections that will be of interest to new visitors, uh, something that will be of new constantly that will bring in people, especially from uh, the tour buses and stuff, bring them down Coleman Avenue. So that's, that's where we're going uh, in future um, events, um, and, uh, and you'll see some more details uh, when you get a chance. Say, Jeremy, that you know, when you <coughs> suggested about um, a mission free five dollar donation, we did that. And so, um, you know, it's been a um, it, it's not been a deterrent, it's it's been we've, we've made some more money. Um, we also have one volunteer, and she's here tonight who will just hound you to where you will buy anything just to get away from her. But, um, you know, she does bring a lot of money to us. So, like, you know, this 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 last month in March, um, I think we had over 700 visitors. And we, for the first time, hit over a thousand dollars in in the donation jar of um, students. Of you know, people love that building. I mean, they come in and they are in awe that that building is still there and that it was the only building that was standing and blah blah blah. But you know, we want to move toward the history of Waveland, and we really, really, really want to do something about the school. We have a lot of good artifacts. We have so much stuff from Dr. Bill. We actually got his bike. So mm -hmm. we're going to do a little display about our Wayland's historian and things of that sort. So, you know, that, that's our big thing. Um, and, you know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know B is the air conditioning. I know that's, you know, the big elephant in the room. Um, and, you know, I can't just be the person to write a grant for that building because it's not my building. I'm just a volunteer there. But I, again, will offer that if anybody in the city wants to write a grant um, to improve anything in that building as a long-term tenant and who really appreciates that building, I am more than willing to do my part of that, okay? So if there's any way that I can help, I just can't be the author because it's a city building and it's not the museum's building, we're just a tenant. Is anybody doing grant searches? Like? Oh, constantly. Do we have <coughs> like grant watch <coughs> software? Or? We do. We look at grants all the time, and we, we tap into all of the. You know, we are we're members of the music of the mm -hmm. National Museum um, organizations, and so um, John and I especially tap into that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, we can write for any grant that's program in J, but we can't. Nobody will allow us to use it to um, for expenses such as um, right. you know electricity and stuff of that sort. Okay. All right. What about insurance? We, do you have seven pieces that we insure? Seven art pieces that we insure? No, we insure that. All the content is um, the Mississippi Power that uh -huh. was um, gifted to the museum, and it's my understanding that we have a content li we have content liability, and I would think Jay that that would be covered under that. Your liability, I think, is the, the building. And it's listed on our, po our property. Is policy. it? Well, then we'll take a look. We have seven. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you get I'll in touch with Lisa? During the week, yeah, Lisa, let's do we're that. insuring seven pieces right now. Yeah, and it's not going to be seven because one piece got. Um, That's why nobody's visited this, you know. Yeah, some and, and one of those pieces, one of those big pieces, got destroyed because of the, um, mm -hmm. the the mold and the humidity in that one big wall that was where we wound up taking that, not putting any more uh, quarters um, artwork there. We moved it to a a, a wall that was. Um, much more secure, and that's where we put the hurricane mural, which was painted in outside paint. 
So yeah, absolutely, we can take a look at that because we're, con you know, it was my understanding that we have the content. So all the other stuff, like the quilts and everything else that's in there, we have content liability. But absolutely, Lisa, you know, get in touch with me and we can take a look at that. Because okay. I know it's not seven pieces anymore either. Okay. Okay. So, you know, read that over, see what you think. You know, we put a lot of time into it. Um, you know, I, I, wish we, I wish we could have found operation stuff, guys. You know, I'd have written that in a heartbeat. But, um, you know, there's just certain limitations, you know, um, and that's, that's one that I can't get around. But again, if, if the city wants to write a grant for the building, it's a historic building, you know, um, there's certain, there's lots of, lots of restrictions on grants for historic buildings, but from a tenant standpoint and from the museum, be happy to do my part. The, uh, I do have one question about, under the grants for uh, museum activities, yeah. <coughs> is the acquisition of an authentic or replica <laughs> Katrina cottage? Can you believe it? We really um, do still want to do that. <laughs> well, a couple things. Um, back during the administration, uh, oh, I right after it. Katrina or something, mm -hmm. uh, I know that they wasn't allowed anymore. I don't know the whole details to them. Um, and we don't need a shame, but we want to just kind of explore it. And then know? where would it go? We would ask the city if there's any kind of place next to, the, um, to that building, if we could put it there, because that would be a perfect place to really do the hurricane piece. You know, and then the whole museum can be about Waveland and about the Gulf Coast, so that you could put the, you know, the um, the oral history and um, all of the all of the artifacts there. But you know, that's just something we'd like to just. I mean, this is like a long-range plan. Yeah. You know, um, the endowments and something like that would be a long-range plan. But you know, again, those like this last month, I just remember because I just sent the. The, um, the report to Lisa, we had 330 visitors um, in March that, did, that were not, that were like from the Midwest. You know, they would absolutely love to see something like that. They would like to walk through something like that and feel what we went through, you know. Locals don't want to do that, been there, done that, okay? But that's not the bulk of the people who come to this. And they, they don't come to Waveland to, you know, they come to Waveland to see how, how we did. And, and it's amazing to me to tell you the truth. But, um, I'm there a lot, you know, I talk to the visitors and they're just enthralled, you know. And, and they're very, they're very um, impressed with our community. And so I think the more we have the businesses that come, I mean, you know, I guess when you look at doing an economic study, you have to have an economy, you know. I mean, you know, you're struggling with, with your budget and I get it, you know, because we don't have that many businesses. So I think as businesses grow, you know, Again, I think at this point, in the next few years or whatever, you know, we're a good anchor for people to come in and see us, you know, spend some time, look at Coleman Avenue, they love the beach, you know. Um, so again, kudos to you guys for getting, starting to get us some, some business around here. Okay. Anything else, guys? Any other comments? And Ronnie, right. do you want to work together or work with anybody on our board with an agreement? If we get to that point, please just let me know. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Moving on to board business. Item A. Motion to approve the depository docket of claims paid and unpaid dated April 2nd, 2024 in the amount of $868,382.65. Move. Ward I'll 1 moves. Ward 2 seconds. Any discussion? Let's go ahead and vote. Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. Has Motion there any, carries. There, was Four. there any changes since when we got it? Originally, Friday, was there any changes added to it? Because I didn't get to look back at it. Just um, 8E, number no. 7. You mean on the docket? No, not the docket. Not the docket. No, not the docket. Okay. <coughs> All right, motion carried 4 0. Item B, motion to approve the operating utilities docket of claims paid and unpaid dated April 2nd, 2024, in the amount of $128,402.48. I'll move. I'll second. Three moves, four seconds. Any discussion? Let's vote one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carries four zero. Item C, motion to approve and authorize mayor's signature on the modification to the subaward agreement with Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality, Municipality and County Water Infrastructure Grant. Agreement modification number one for the Waven Citywide Sewer Improvements ARPA project, replacing the current agreement number with Okay, y'all can read them. 330-2 DW-5.15 with 330-2 CW-5.5. I'll move. Second. Ward 2 moves, Ward 1 seconds. Any discussion? What's the change for the modification? Just the, the, the agreement number that I noticed. 
It's a, just the number itself. There's that's no changes to that. That's yeah. all I didn't see any other change. Yeah, changes. yep. I ran, I ran a dot compare. I didn't see any change other than the numbers. Okay. All right. Any discussion further? Let's go ahead and vote Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Item E, motion to reimburse Hancock County the amount of $2,829 and two cents. Skip, skip one, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped D. Motion to approve an authorized mayor's signature on the notice to proceed for the Art Street Gravity Sewer Project with contractor Southern Colonial Construction LLC with work commencing on 4-22-24. Move. Second. Who seconds? Jamie. Ward 1 moves one four. Ward 4 seconds. Any discussion? <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and vote. Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. Motion carries. 4-0. Item E, motion to reimburse Hancock County the amount of $2,829.02 for RSVP payments received March through September of 2023. Move. Three moves. Second. Four seconds. Two. Two seconds. I'm getting an echo over here. Okay. Any discussion? Didn't we do this already? We asked the same thing. We, we, we reimbursed three months. And so, so we have we to go back. Um, Janita actually left RSVP at around March 1st. So um, a private citizen has brought this to the attention of Hancock County Board of Supervisors and they have approached me, asked me if we'd have a problem reimbursing them for the other months. To so this finishes it out? Finishes it out. We've Perfect. already done October, November. Yep. Good. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and vote. Ward one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carries. Four zero. Item F. Motion to revise the date of the white linen event on Coleman Avenue from 9-21-24 to 9-14-24 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Coleman Avenue. The city will provide barricades, trans trash cans, open bathrooms at City Hall block Coleman Avenue from Bourgeois Street to Arlington Street. This request also provides access to the temporary power pole in front of Ms. Summer Holder's lot at 227 Coleman Avenue to plug in additional lighting. This was approved on 3524. I don't think Ms. Summer Holder's here to answer any questions. She basically just moved it up a week. Is, th is this an individual this event? Is the, no, the, individ money, the money is for the animal shelter. Because okay, so it's not in. It doesn't no, say it's, that it's anywhere. It's not for an individual, no. Any other discussion? All right, let's go ahead and vote Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Who made the motion second? I was taking notes. Who made the motion second? I, I don't think second. we did. Oh, I don't, I don't think, think we did. did we skipped over it? Yeah. 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 Dave's got dinner plans or something. He's moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, made a, we need a motion. All right, who's going to make I'll the move? move? Four moves. I'll second. And two seconds. We need to vote again? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and vote. Board one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carries. Item G, motion to advertise for lease of commercial space located at the Waveland Lighthouse parking lot for the term May 17th, 2024 through May 16th, 2025. That's where we had the food truck and the um, snowball. I'll move. Stand. Last. I'll second. Ward one moves, ward two seconds. Any discussion? Let's go ahead and vote. Ward one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carries. Four zero. Planning and zoner. Zoning. Mark Schiffer, owner of the property company known as 10049 Eaton Lane. Parcel number 139B-0-29-239.000. Chris Carter will present the findings. I guess y'all... Uh, This thing got a little complicated. Um, last meeting, the mayor has me to look into it, see where we stood with the uh, time extensions and the uh, temporary permits. The findings that I made, he, let's see, Mr. Schiffer submitted his application on November 25th of 22 for temporary use of these storage containers uh, during the construction of this house. Um, he was pretty pretty specific in that he needed them to be able to lock up his materials and 
some of his equipment, tractors and implements and that sort of thing, keep them from getting stolen. Uh, the the ordinance sections that he cited in his application are very specific to temporary usage. Um, Mr. Schiffer, I went back and, and not only read the minutes, but I watched the video on, of each one of these uh, meetings to make sure I had this straight in my mind. Mr. Schiffer discussed wanting to use them as a boathouse or components <coughs> of his boathouse uh, in, in a permanent capacity. That was just the discussion at the meeting from Mr. Schiffer to the board. The, uh, motion was made by the board to approve it as it was written which it was only submitted as a temporary usage so there was never that I can find any agreement if you will to authorize these temporary these shipping containers to be used in a permanent capacity um, he came that was at the uh, January January 9th meeting 2023 of the Planning and Zoning Commission. The case came to y'all on the 18th. Uh, I made a motion to accept the Planning Commission's <coughs> recommendation at that time with the condition that they be anchored to the ground and inspected and that they were going to be allowed to remain for six months with the option for y'all to renew the permits uh, six month increments after that initial approval. Uh, the September the 5th, Mr. Shipper came back to you guys requesting a four month extension. You, uh, I think the mayor actually said, look, it just makes sense, let's just give you six months and be done with it. The, uh, that, that time frame is greater than six months, but Mr. Shipper's contention is that they didn't, uh, the containers didn't get there until April. So they were placed in April he assumed six months from that gave him until September. I, I don't. I don't think that's. Good. I don't think that's a huge sticking point. Um, nonetheless, September the fifth meeting, you guys ended up approving another six month extension. Uh, this was revisited at the last meeting, March the twentieth. Um, that's when I was asked to do a little do a little homework. This is what I came up with. So the short version, I can't find anywhere that Mr. Schiffer has officially gotten approval to have these containers in a permanent capacity and then you guys put a moratorium on shipping containers in the meanwhile. <coughs> it's, it's kind of sticky to be just perfectly honest with you. Um, I was over there today. Mr. Schiffer has got the uh, piers constructed by the water where he wants to put the containers and they are actually sited on the piers. They've been placed there on the framing of the piers uh, as of today. They're not covered, no roof over them, no siding, anything like that. They're just shipping containers sitting elevated out there by the, by the canal. So. There was never a permit to do it? Temporary usage permit. Right, that's set storage. Temporary set on the ground. Construction. Temporary, temporary usage permit for storage. Right. Um, they got to be anchored to the ground so they don't float. There's never been another permit. He's gotten an extension one time, but he's never gotten a permit for the permanent use. I did go back and look at the uh, construction drawings that were submitted with his house. They don't reflect any shipping containers being used. He may have an updated set. But the so the permit the building permit that the city issued, there was no reference to use of those containers for permanent construction. No, sir. Not that I'm fine. And they've been, the anchors have been removed and they've been placed on top of the pylons ready to, yes. to go yes, for the boathouse. So the they've been, it's been converted without a permit. Yes, ma'am. They had um, completed conversion. He's in the process of it's, conversion. It's in the process. Okay. Um, I think I think there was some confusion uh, throughout the process. Mr. Schiffer did. He stood right here and, and told the Planning and Zoning Commission his intent was to have them permanently. He told you guys his intent was to have them permanently. 
It just never made it in writing or as an official motion to make it legal. And it wasn't part of his plans and specs that were approved? Not that I have seen, no, sir. So now the question may go to Ronnie to figure out how to make this legal. Or, or even if we should. Or not. <laughs> to either make, it, make it, not. it legal or make it removed, I guess, yeah. is the question you guys have for me. Well, uh, how, how many times have we said, we said it a million times. If it isn't in writing, it didn't happen. Our intents can be really good, but if we don't do, I told you this one was kind of sticky. I don't like it. So, why don't you let Chris and I get together, review these findings, and come up with? In the meantime, put a stop work order. Recommendations mm -hmm. on. Yep. Definitely. Well, I think you, you, if he's deviating from the plans and specs that were approved, right. you, you certainly have grounds to put a stop work order on at least that component of the construction. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Obligated to. Yeah, absolutely. So we kick this can down the road to our next meeting and then give you some time to get with Chris and figure it out. And we can make recommendations to you on your on options. I mean, we're not going to tell you leave them, not leave them, but we will give you options on what you need to do depending upon the outcome you want to see. Yes. Okay. So is Mr. Schiff a local? I don't think so. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think he is. All right. All right. We need to give him uh, so you some notification before the next meeting that of the stop work order pending mm -hmm. further review and investigation by the building official and the city attorney. You've actually got a uh, New Orleans address listed on this application. Okay. All right. Because so plan so you, just, you, just, you just don't just need to take there. action on that. We can do that and, and we'll okay. come back to you. All right. Any other questions can, about can issue the stop work order without <coughs> action. Ready to move to number two? Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, go ahead to number two. Charles Johnson, Johnson, owner of the property commonly known as 319 Jeff Davis Avenue. Mr. Carter, to discuss extension of approval of temporary occupancy of RV during construction. Um, all right, Mr. Johnson, the, the chronology of events as I could, as I could put it together, uh, Mr. Johnson issued a permit for he said his sister was going to occupy the RV while he built her residence on this property. Um, initial permit was issued 11:30 of 22 for the for the RV to temporary usage. It was issued for a period of 180 days. That permit expired April the 30th of 23. It was not renewed, although the occupancy has continued this whole time. Um, no notices were given to, to Mr. Johnson that I can find of the expiration. No written notices. It may have, there may have been some verbal. I don't, I don't know about that, but there's no written notices that I can find anywhere in the files. Um, I think that uh, my, my reason for pointing that out, I think it's incumbent on us as a planning department to make sure we do issue notices like that for people. Uh, so, nonetheless, Mr. Johnson realized the mistake, and he came. He came to the planning department on January the fifth of this year to try and get it caught up and get it get it fixed. Um, went to the uh, planning and zoning commission. They recommended uh, approval. The staff recommendation is conditional approval. Um, you've got my my report there in front of you. Um, I think he, my recommendation would be to grant him retroactive renewals to get him caught up. Um, make him, he's gonna have to pay the requisite fees for those, those renewals, I think it's $100, $100 every six months. So 
we gotta, we gotta get that caught up. Um, I would also think, based on, I was over here talking with him on the property, one day last week, I don't remember the day, but the, the house is progressing. It's under construction, but if we go with the original uh, six month deadlines, this uh, extension will go until five, April the 30th. It ain't no way he's gonna finish the house by April the 30th, just to be honest with you. He's is his building permit current? Yes. So he, he's, he's built it by himself, literally. Mm -hmm. so it, it's just at a stage right now that I don't know if he could finish it by April 30th if he brought in a crew to help. So my recommendation is to grant him a <coughs> extension ahead of time that gets him on into November and uh, probably condition it where we don't do any more extensions. Just make that up. Make that, uh, Your recommendation is a retroactive six month subject to payment of those permit fees, right? Mm -hmm. And then a, another uh, extension to extension to November, another six month just, extension. Yes, well, just for clarity, Mr. Johnson was in the office the other day mm -hmm. trying to pay the fees. He wanted to get caught up. He's so he, he's not trying to uh, skirt what's going on. So. And he came to us as not. He came to us. Yeah. He came to us. We failed to notify him like I think we should have. And uh, he came to us to remedy, fix what he realized was broken. All right, this does need a motion. Yes, it does. That All right, so, require a motion. Go ahead. So I move that we do, that we combine these two conditions. So we, he can pay the retroactive and pay it forward, do it to November 30th. Mr. Johnson's in my ward. Um, he's been extremely honest. He's been, and I, I know that you're, you've been slowed up on your construction because you had to have major surgery. So, I mean, I, we empathize with that. We understand that. Um, I apologize that you weren't notified sooner because I brought it to the atten their attention, but they never, I don't guess they ever went out and talked to you about it. Um, and I saw this coming a long time ago. So um, if we extend this through November, there won't, you can't, no more RV after that. So you need to have it finished by then or she's going to have to live somewhere else until you get it finished okay so that's my motion how do you um, well, let me just clarify the date it would be <clears throat> from april 30th to october 30th that's six months and then Look, it's uh, this one expires go, go april 30th. right here it's all right there it's actually may 30th go until uh, May 30th right. until November 30th of last year. Right. And then that one came forward and then again until November 30th of 24. So Ms. Uh, Gamble has made a motion. Um, I'll, I'll second that. You second it, okay. Any further discussion? All right, let's go ahead and vote one. one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carries. All right, Mr. Johnson, get with Get with the building department. All right, Bonded Properties, Lance Ryan, owner of the property commonly known as 207 Hunter Hollow. Um, this, this was held in advance from 3 2024 board meeting. Mr. Carter to present progress report on this property. This one's easy. <laughs> Nothing's been done since our last meeting. You see how it's the scaffolding up That's by correct. the dormers? It's and the scaffolding up the last, the last time, so yeah, there is a scaffolding in front of the house to allow access to the dormer to put the siding on. Um, and again, I was over there today just making sure I had my ducks in a row before I stood here in front of you guys. The pool in the backyard is green as a gourd and stagnant. I thought last meeting they said that that was clean. Uh, well, he said, what he said last meeting is he put some shock in it. 
and he was mm -hmm. going to drain it and refill it. I don't it. know if he put any shock in it or not, but I'm telling you, it's green as St. Patrick. <laughs> Did he know to come back tonight? He was advised, yes, ma'am, that this was held in abeyance until tonight. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I recall at the last meeting, he said he had to get back on the road and make some money. So yeah, he, I haven't he did. spoken to him since that night of the meeting. Okay. But there has been no action taken over at the house on either of the items that are remaining. But so the wishes of the board for us to proceed with the cleanup as originally initiated? The fence and everything is good. Fence is good. He, he, he has gotten that taken care of. He had that done actually at the yeah, before the last the meeting. Last meeting. Yeah. So I just want to make sure because I thought the pool was done too. No, the only thing that was left was, was getting that pool squared away and getting the dormers or permanent weatherproofing on the dormers. Is he uh, is he living that house by himself? Is he or does he have a family in there? Do you I, know? I don't know. I mean, because what and the reason I'm asking that is because if he's back working, driving a truck across the country and somebody's living there, then somebody else could be doing those things for him while he's gone. Yes, ma'am. I don't think he was, and I, I don't want to speak out of time, but I don't think Mr. Uh, Ryan was actually doing this work himself. Uh, I went over there before the last meeting uh, checking on the fences, and he had some, some folks uh, climbing around on the roof putting some house trap on the dormers at that time. I don't think he's actually doing the, doing the physical work. But he also did, he made mention of the pool up and running for the family. Oh, I okay. Know, I don't know if that means there's family in the house or he's got outside family coming in. I mean, because the bad part is it looks like he's done a lot. Yes. He's just not there yet. Mm -hmm. Like just looking at the photos of what it, yard and all did look like and he was going to remove a couple of trucks and so what what is our recourse well we can uh, we can pursue uh, court action like said we can write him a citation the, the judge I'm sure will and then in the city's favor on that mm -hmm. finding and then i have to talk with ronnie a little further but i think we can request that the judge order the cleanup and then we can set a crew over there to run the pool and mm -hmm. do whatever needs to be done the work on the dormers is relatively new um, i believe but the pool is 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 definitely old and the dormers have been uncovered for years incomplete for years what's that the dormers have been incomplete like not wrapped in for have they had the scaffolding up? No, I mean the scaffolding because he had somebody putting the wrap on it, but they've been you okay. know, unfinished for uh, as long as I can remember. Okay. All right, so we need to cite him on both. And uh, the vehicles, uh, can you see the vehicles from the street? Not with the fence. Not with the fence up there. Okay. All right, well, I, my suggestion is you go out there and um, cite him um, on the pool and the dormers. And, do we have to vote on that? No, we can do that as part of the ongoing enforcement action that's already been initiated. Anybody else? Anything to add? We just need to amend the citation to remove the items he's already prepared. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, Joe, Ward? I know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of torn to be honest. I don't know. Um, he has done a lot, mm -hmm. um, but I know this is stuff has been going on for years, like I said. Citing him, making him go to court, pay fines, is that just gonna put him Further I'm behind. Further on getting this stuff done. Well, he can plead his case to the judge. Mm. Get it done before then. I don't know. And I know, <clears throat> just looking at the pool, I don't know how long the pool's been there. And I know to put a pool in, you have to have a permit to do it. So I don't know if this pool, I mean, just looking at the pool, it looked like somebody dug the hole, put it in there. I don't know if there's a ground or grid or anything on this pool, safety wise, you know? It's a, uh, you know, I was peeping through fence pickets. So, <laughs> Looks to me like it's a fiberglass pool. Mm -hmm. There's no concrete. There's no concrete deck. I couldn't see anything with, as far as grounding grids, uh, any, any mechanisms to, to ground the equipment. Now it does not appear to be hooked up to anything at this time. But again, I was peeking through a picket in the fence. He's he's he has said on a couple of occasions the pool is not. 
Jeremy, would you feel better if we, I mean, if it's been going on for years, we can put it off until our April, next meeting in April the 17th and give him time to get in touch with him and say if you don't have it finished by the 17th, you're going to get cited? I'd be okay with that. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll make that motion. But I don't think it needs to be in a form. If that's the case, you don't. And I don't yeah. We just need you to take action when we come back to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Why does it even need to come back? If it's not done by then, just... If he, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. if, he, yeah. if he doesn't do it by the 17th, I can, know, yeah. well, I can proceed. Yeah, yeah. just sign it. Fair enough. Do okay. we need a vote on that? No. Okay. No. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, moving on to consent agenda. Motion to approve the following consent agenda items as numbered items A through I. I'll move. Second. Ward 4 moves Ward 1 seconds. Any discussion? <clears throat> Shane, when did, when did you want to discuss this? Air condition. I'd, I'd like to just do it as a separate agenda item at the bottom or something. Well, you've already got it as a separate one. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you added it to it. Um, yeah, can we just remove that one? That was, uh, we said that was going to be 8I. Yeah. No. That was under business, under, um, no, that's no that was under the uh, mayor's attorney, comment. uh, mayor's, yeah, mayor's, mayor's, mayor's comments. That's 4B. 4B. All right, let's vote the consent we, we can do the consent agenda and then go back to 4B. All right, okay let's, let's vote the consent agenda. Any discussion? Let's go ahead and vote Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. Consent agenda passes 4-0. Going back to Mayor's comments, item 4B. So I guess my go ahead. Motion to discuss A. I'll make, I'll make the motion. I'll, move, I'll say. Okay. Discussion. So I guess my first question is the... Um, Wait, they didn't vote. Three move, four second. But they didn't vote. We're discussing. We're, discussing. We're, we're having a discussion. But you made a motion. No, no motion. Okay. So I guess my thing is it, it's going to cost a lot of money to fix it, which mm -hmm. we all kind of figure right. that. But I'm looking at where the money is going to come from because looking at just, for example, the revenue and expense report, and I'm getting that mayor. I was looking at the blighted stuff. But I just want to know. Would this be coming out of project funds? Um, as far as expenditures on project funds, we had 241,440, and I don't remember which projects that was that was allocated. And then the list of the city of uh, Wayland project list, are each one of these match funds already set aside? I'm sorry, Shane. Each one of the, on the City of Wayland project list mm -hmm. for the match funds. Right. Like we had talked about in the past, you know, if, if we was to get every project listed on the project list with the match funds, you know, where would we have the funds to, to come up with that at? Is where is that budgeted at? Well, it's, the air condition is not in the budget. I know the air condition is not. That's what I'm yeah. trying to see what we got left in project funds. Orange Street's already committed. Tyler Foy and Ruby's committed. Out of what line item? On the budget, out of Lisa, you know. I don't. I don't have it with me tonight. Um, Foy, Tyler Foy and Ruby Street was money left over from the uh, general obligation bond. Um, Orange Street is modernization. It's coming out of modernization. I know that's budgeted. Yeah. So the we, only thing that we really haven't committed to is the. St. Joseph Street sidewalk project. And what about the Garfield Latin up here? Well, you know, where are we going with that? Yeah, I know. Still waiting. Do we have what's, uh, what do we look like right now in the reserve fund? Robert, you got the reserve account? Yeah, we got a total of 2.8 million in reserve. Everything total? Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. That if, it's going to have to. If y'all decide which way you want to go with this, that we take the money out of the reserves. All right. So whenever you call in a reserve, Robert, you, are you including 
the investment fund that we had for mm -hmm. the two million dollars in the investment funds as well, or is that additional? Okay. Two months ago, I'm not saying it was two months ago, we, we, we moved set it. aside two million dollars for uh, general fund operation of the city and eight hundred thousand for utilities. So when I say the two point eight million is for All right. Two months ago, we set aside two million for what? Two point eight million for contingencies. That would require board action. Yes. Um, and then we still got the two, the two million from the investment fund, <clears throat> which is not an investment fund anymore. I think we moved that to an account because it was collecting into the general fund. Into the general fund. Oh, I'm sorry, I take that back. That was moved into ARPA. Originally, those funds were ARPA funds, and so the 1.5 million yeah. moved to ARPA. We have a dedicated ARPA account, 1.5. We took it out of the investment account. I thought it was two million. That was, that, that was in that investment account. We still have a few dollars in there, don't we? Not yeah. in the investment fund. No, we moved, no, we moved all moved of it. All. But in, to in total, it was $2 million, because that's what we started with. I think it, so. It was in that neighborhood. I know that ARPA fund right now is one point, just under $1.6 million. So that's what we have right now in ARPA is $1.6 mm -hmm. And that's after we've spent, which one of these, Mayor, did you say went to ARPA? Which one of these projects on this project list? Sewer improvements. ARPA is the citywide sewer improvement project. Did we do the Art Street sewer project out of ARPA, or which one did that no. come out of? No, I'm pretty sure that Art Street came out of modernization. Mm -hmm. I think so. And Tyler, Foy, and Ruby was the money left over from the ob general obligation bond. So, you know, there's another 1.5 that's coming for ARPA. That's part of the state's reimbursable. It's a reimbursable grant. I, I just want to make sure we have enough to cover all these match funds for the sidewalks, mm -hmm. the, the, the oh, pier, yeah. all that, without getting into our uh, 2.8. So far this year, revenue has been $7 million. Expenditure has been $5 million. So just from that, it shows that we're running right now $2 million ahead. The more we're receiving, more in revenue. But you're including grants and stuff with that seven million. Mm -mm. Uh, no. No. <clears throat> I mean, at the rate that we're moving as far as the Garfield Ladner Pier, that 295 match that we have planned to match, I mean, that may not even be used anytime in the near future. The general fund we have budgeted eight million dollars revenue, and we've received four million. So the other ones is coming from dedicated funds. Uh, Robert? Yeah. Um, It's been, been overfunded for a couple of years. Right, but you you said that we've collected you said we've collected seven million and we've spent four million, right? Somewhere in that line? So we've received seven million more in revenue. I'm sorry, we've received seven million in revenue and five million in expenses. Okay, but just looking at general fund, because I'm not looking at utilities because we know mm -hmm. the utility fund's completely separate. Mm -hmm. okay. General fund, we have received 4.1 million in <coughs> revenue, and expenses have been 2.9. This difference of 1.1 million. <coughs> but now, also, the general fund has collected the large portion of the ad valorem taxes by now, oh, and if not, right. So that's why you look like it's so much more now. Absolutely. But you, you're going to collect less and less, other than your sales tax, as you extend all the way through October. We got about another half million dollars out there yeah. to collect. But, but your expenses, you're at three million, and so I mean, if by the time you 
extrapolate that out, you, you're going to be close on on them, I, I think. Mm -hmm. But we don't have just three million extra right now. That, that's actually to carry help carry us through. Um, so, as long as we as long as we have the money to match the uh, the projects. And not get into our 2.8 million if it has to come out of the uh, what used to be the investment fund. Mm -hmm. Then I would say, at that point, we go through the investment account or whatever we want to call it now. What's it called now? Um, general fund. Yep. Uh, special yep. use or something. What's the What's the title of that one? General fund. <laughs> it's just in the general. Fund. Yeah, it's in the general fund. But those But those monies are obligated for board action before it's just spent out throughout the general fund. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted that set up as a as a special account that requires board action. That's what we had talked about whenever we were moving that. Well, it does require board action. Right, but not just through the uh, docket of claims or anything. I mean, it's, it's, if we're going to use that, it, it requires yeah, board approval. action. Right. Okay. Um, I would say we go through that for the air condition repairs and leave the rest of the money for the projects that we've already got mm -hmm. that we that we got to match. I don't know how everybody else feels about it. Mm -hmm. no, that's where absolutely. So, Mr. Robert, what do we need to do to for us to be able to use the uh, the 1.6 for the air condition? What do we need to do? Do we need to make a motion to yeah. spend that money that's out it. of that? Yeah. Yep. You have to decide which way you want to go. You want brand new units? You want compressor replacements? I think if you're going to do it, you need to go ahead and yeah. uh, pull the trigger and, and get new equipment because it's been repaired many a times, and I think we'd just be throwing darts if we try to repair again. Mm -hmm. Well, when they've said in that even if we replace the compressors, we'll be lucky if those last right. a year. Why would we spend twenty thousand dollars on compressors when you know it's going to last twelve months? That's just ridiculous. I think the the difference in cost is a lot mm -hmm. for the the carrier versus what's currently there. The carrier doesn't have the uh, uh, basically like a dehumidifier, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to really pull the moisture out. Yep. Of that building, like the carrier would, right? Right. That's mm -hmm. exactly the difference. I mean, I think I think we've definitely got to have that. Yep. So we need a motion to. But we're going to have to bid for that. <coughs> the replacement will have to go up for bid because it's more than seventy-five thousand. Wait, but you still need the motion to Absolutely. transfer the money. Yeah. Wait, we have bids. Then we have the two bids no, we already. Have we have to advertise. Gotcha. How I'm long sorry. is that going to tie us up? <laughs> Yeah, about a month. month. A month. Yeah. About Thirty days. And then another month for them to order supply, order the, order the equipment to get it put in. By the longer. time that yeah. happens, yeah. it's going to yeah. be so hot in it it can't breathe. Well, okay, it's no ahead. sense in wasting <clears throat> another minute. Well, well, let me ask this then. Um, which one is which one is for the carrier compressor? That one's eight thousand. Uh, the Aon is ninety five hundred ninety five seventy five to replace right. the compressor. Right. Actually, Mayo, Mayo. It says Mayor must have self populated Mayo's. Quote to replace the carrier unit compressor seventy one ten. Yeah. But both of, but the units that's in there is the Aon units, isn't it? You have you have two units. Yeah. One's a carrier, one's a Aon. So the only person, that, the only one that I see that quoted to replace the Aon compressor is Mechanical Services? Yes, they're the only ones that work on it. Well, if they're the only ones that work on it, why do we have to go out for bid if they're the only provider? Well, I mean, 
we, we advertise it. I mean, it's the only one that we could find. But if we advertise it, somebody sees it. I just think that, I mean, if we have to advertise, you're looking at 30 days, no telling how long for them to order and get the stuff in. Yep. I'm just wondering how quick could they get the, the compressor in for the Aon unit to just put the compressor in it and put the compressor in the carrier. I mean, I know that you're looking at 20,000 by the time it's all said and done. For two months? For two months. Until yeah. the new units are in? You still? No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying do both. Oh, oh, yeah, say both. I'm not saying do both. You're just saying do it, <coughs> do it in compressors now? Yeah, but that's what, I'm, that's what I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. Will that get us a couple of years of life expectancy out of them? Mm -hmm. If we replace compressors, or is it going to replace the compressors and you know, crash again in two months? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out what the difference is. But I know we can't go into June or July waiting on air conditioning. At that point, it's especially with the humidity. Well, the carrier unit, if you read the, the uh, email about the carrier unit, it says it uses R22 refrigerant, and that doesn't, that you can't even use that anymore. That's obsolete. So the whole unit's going to have to be replaced. No, they said it can do just a compressor. That's what Mayo. So R and put the... the just replacing the compressor is going to change the refrigerant? I'm not an air conditioning guy, but that's what I was told. And then also the uh, Air Masters Mechanical said, uh, after getting with the supervisor, doesn't feel it's feasible to attempt to repair mm -hmm. on the existing. Hey, look, I can go to Lowe's and buy three window units for $800, $900 a piece and put them in there until until... They can get the that new equipment in. I think fans would do better than that. Those the, those ceilings are so high. Those well, I mean, those window units aren't going to do a, anything. A temporary fix. Until I'd it, go buy them a bunch of. Till the new units can be installed. I, I think we need to fix it right, and f not waste another minute. Fix it right and fix it now. So then it'll be, we're at the beginning of April. It'll be starting in June first. I'm not saying put the window units in permanently. But you right. Can't put the windows in. right. No, you can't. You can't put window units in the whole historic There's building. There's archives and histories and yeah. restrictions on them. But you can put them in there while you're waiting on Temporary. Waiting for the new equipment to come in and be installed. That'll give them some relief and mm -hmm. definitely in sugar pops. And yeah. That's... that's better way to go chain I believe they're going and spending twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars on compressors and then yeah. something else breaks mm -hmm. six months we're doing I think yeah. you're right we got to buy a window in to set take what a 110 yeah, probably got to get a bunch of them <laughs> that's I don't think you get that much BTUs out of 110s no. what is uh, it but you can't we can't go run new lines electrical lines no I'm just saying I don't think you're gonna get it with three of them no, I think you're gonna end up probably one in each per each room or something what about mini splits? Oh. Mini split we put in the computer room cost us nine thousand dollars, and we had quotes from three different companies. Nine thousand dollars. Yeah. And that's crazy. That's a small room. Well, I guess it looks like we'll go with the window units as a temporary while we're waiting on quotes to come in. Well, advertising and bids yes. to come in. Yeah. To replace the. I guess it would be the Aon or equivalent. I guess is how we would. Well, with the with the dehumidifier. The problem you got with the, a, the Aon units on the roof, and if you change the footprint. Yep. Yeah. 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 Then you got to go to archives and history and everything That's else. That's right. So we want to get the same footprint unit. Okay. Advertise for it and get one of the units. We need a motion to advertise. I'm sorry. We'll need a motion to authorize us to advertise as soon as tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Shane moved. I second. And who, who moved? Shane. Ward three moved. Ward one second. Any discussion? This is to advertise for new carrier, new Aon units for the Ground Zero Museum.
Any discussion? Let's go ahead and vote Ward 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. Yes. 4. Yes. I guess we need a motion to purchase some window units. Um, I'll move. Ward 4 moves. Second. Ward 1 seconds. Um, I don't know how we're going to put a, a quantity on there. Mayor, is there? Could not Dixie. Someone go look Those around in there and see if there's any, like in the kitchen area, is there any 220 outlets in there? Or, or junction box that may be a, put a receptacle there? If there's any 220 in that building, it's going to be in the kitchen. Right. Okay. All right. Mayor, I don't, I don't know if you need a, do you need a motion to purchase air conditioning units? You have authority up to X number of dollars, yeah. Okay. I don't know how many you want to buy. Yeah. Enough to cool it down. I, I mean, right now, you might, right now you might only need three. Yeah. But as we get further along, depending on how long it takes them to get the equipment and stuff in, then we might have to All right. do something different. We'll start with three, and we won't need a motion. All right. Okay. All right. And then what you'll need to do before we accept the bids and award the work, you'll need to make the motion on the funding part of it to utilize the funds. Yeah. All right. I need a motion to go into executive session for a uh, legal matter, potential litigation aspect regarding a. Uh, no move. What one moves? All second. What four seconds? Let's go ahead and vote. What one? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Motion to enter executive session for legal, no legal matter. Second. Who moved? Four? Three and two. Three move. Two seconds. Go ahead and vote. What one? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? Four? Yes. All right.
plug me, Bobby. All right. Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion to come out of executive session with no action taken? Move. I'll second. Ward one moves, Ward two seconds. Let's go ahead and vote, Ward one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carries. We have a motion to adjourn. Move. Move. Second. Ward one moves, Ward three seconds. Let's vote, Ward one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Meet and adjourn. Y'all know I was a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? You know I was a counselor. But then when you do, Shane so wasn't here to vote. No one else shut up. That was part of it.